So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and I've been playing around with iPadOS 15 now for about a week and I wanted to give you guys my overall thoughts over that week when it comes down to overall performance, battery, maybe some new tricks and some new things that I actually discovered within iPadOS 15 which I did see a good amount of. So those are the things we're going to go over with iPadOS 15 and then finally talk about if it's worth it to get it now or kind of wait for the public developer beta or just wait for September where everybody else is going to get them. But without further ado, let's get right into it. Also, don't forget to check out channel sponsor Paperlike. Let's go. So let's start off with the actual build number. Let's go into the settings, see exactly what we're dealing with. You can see that we're on software version 15.0. If we tap on that, so you can see that we're on 19A5261W. So that W actually means we're probably going to get a lot of future beta updates as time goes on. Because usually what that W indicates is that we're going down in reverse alphabetical order. So the closer we get to A and then the closer we get to not having any letters over there, that means we're getting closer to that final release date. So with a W there, that means we got a lot of betas coming down the pipeline. And usually in the beginning, we get them in two week intervals. And then in terms of size of update, it was about three gigabytes. So give yourself at least six gigabytes of storage if you're going from the older 14.7 update or below and then going to 15.0. So some of the things that I wanted to talk about in this video is some new things that I noticed that weren't talked about in the first video that I did, right? So the first thing that I noticed that I thought was pretty cool that I posted on Instagram. So if you guys want to check me out on Instagram, it's going to be right here. But the first thing that I noticed, I actually took a screen recording of this. And if I go into my photos, click on this, you can see that you can now drag a notification into multitasking. Now, I don't know if that's something that's new or not, but it's something that I noticed. I don't know if it's new to iPadOS 15, but I wanted to show that off and let you guys know. The next thing has to be with Spotlight Search. So if you go into Spotlight Search and I search, let's say, iPadOS, it acts pretty familiarly, right? So it goes through your notes, it goes through Safari, but now if you go to the bottom, you can see that it searches inside of photos. So now I can literally look at a photo that has iPadOS and you can see that it's highlighted there. And that's awesome. So it's that new live text feature. So, so iPadOS can now read text inside of an actual photo because this is straight from my photo gallery. So you can see highlighting iPadOS right there. Very cool to see from directly from Spotlight. Another cool one that I noticed is with the multitasking, right? And we'll talk about this in a second. So with the multitasking that we talked about, if you clicked on the little three dots up here, then this is what brought up the new multitasking. You could pick whatever application you wanted to use as well. So another Safari tab. But something that I noticed, which was kind of cool to kind of make it even a quicker action, is you could just swipe down. You guys saw that? Just swipe down, click on Twitter. Whoa. And there you saw a little bit of a crash. So that was a live crash. So this is an example as to why a beta isn't quite perfect yet. But if we go back into it, right, let's get rid of Twitter right there. All you do is swipe down to enable multitasking, click on the one that you want, and then you're back into multitasking. And then when you're in multitasking, you can still use that same gesture, right? So Swipe down to get rid of Twitter, open up another Safari tab, swipe down to get rid of the Safari tab, open up an Office tab or a Word tab right there, move it down. So I like this new overall gesture system when it comes to the multitasking because it just feels native, it feels like it makes sense. Literally just swipe down to grab another multitasking. Let's open up a LumaFusion. That's awesome. The next thing I wanted to show you guys is actually within Safari, which is kind of cool. Some people asked about this, so I wanted to show it off. I don't know how often people are going to be in this situation. But what you can do now is actually listen to two things at the same time. So if I click on two videos before we get copyrighted. So you can see that both of them play sound at the same time, even though it's within Safari in the same iPad, iPad OS system. And the next thing that we saw that everybody did tell me about was if you just swipe down in Safari, you can now refresh the page. So even though the toolbar is all weird now, if you move it out of the way, the little refresh button isn't there anymore. You can just pull down for, the, for those of you that, you know, didn't actually know that yet. Another cool one has to do with the actual iPad OS. So if you long hold and start to move things around, you can actually hide and remove different home screens, right? I only have the one. So let's say if I move this one over over here, create a second home screen, I can now hide this home screen for it not to show up whenever I'm moving it around and then click it again. Long, all you have to do is long press, click down here open it up again, press done, and then you can see that it's right there. So that actually came over from iOS 14, but I'm glad that it's on iPadOS 15 now this year. Another different one that I noticed was if you see the settings, it's a little bit different. 
the UI is more of, it's like bubbled, right? Normally it would extend across the entire screen, these lines, but I don't know if you guys noticed that. It's just a small little thing. It's a visual thing, nothing functional. And while we're in the settings, if you go into battery, we now have a beautiful low power mode right here that we can enable on iPadOS, which is something that we didn't have for some reason before this iPhones have had low power mode for a very, very long time. I want to say since iOS 7. So I'm glad that now we get a little bit of a low power mode on iPad OS and on iPads in general. And the next two things have to do with Safari. So if we go into Safari down here, we can go to extensions, right? There's a little extensions tab right now here because with iPad OS, we're able to use extensions. So we click on extensions, click on more extensions, and then you're taken to this new app store, this sub level app store that gives you all these extensions. I have not tried a single one of these out because they all seem to be ad blockers, but hey, at least we have the ability to have extensions. Like I haven't been able to find like Honey or anything on here, but maybe it automatically loads in if you do have the Honey app. And then the last thing, which is what you guys saw with Safari. So if we click on Safari, open up a new tab. You can see that I got a nice little background image. So if you open up the start page, if you scroll down, there's a little edit button down here. And this allows you to edit the actual Safari like start page. So you can do favorites, frequently visited, shared with you, privacy report. Siri suggestions, reading lists, iCloud tabs, and then you can enable a background image, right? So just turn that on and you can even create a custom one. So if you want to upload your own image, you're more than welcome to do that. So those are just some other features that I noticed with an iPad OS 15, which I didn't notice before. But now let's talk about actual performance and overall performance, which is awesome. So the first thing I'm going to notice is I have all these tabs open. This NBA 2K game is from last night. I'm going to try to open it up in the middle of a game and see if it still works. Yep, it still works. It's still in the middle of the game. I don't have my controller with me, but I normally use my controller. But you can see that I'm still in the middle of the game. One or more controllers is missing, so i got to reconnect my controller. But you can see that it's still in the game. So performance has been awesome, even with iPad OS 15 on this M1 iPad Pro. But what I do want to check out is actual battery performance. I have been charging it a decent amount. So if we go to actual battery, click it on here, and see exactly what we're getting. So last 24 hours, 2 hours, and 32 minutes of screen on time, last 10 days around three hours and 44 minutes. But I, again, I'm not really testing or taxing the actual battery too much. This day right here, for instance, we got seven hours and three minutes on above a 100% charge. So that means that I was getting around six hours of screen on time with 100% battery. And you see that YouTube takes a lot of it, the home and lock screen take a lot of it. It's probably because I had my screen to just never lock. But then we have 2K and things like that. But then another high level day, which is on Friday, six hours and 36 minutes. We were still below that 100% charge mark, but you can see that overall, this would be another day where maybe I got like eight hours. So overall, it fluctuates between anywhere from six to 10 hours of battery left, depending on how you use the iPad. But overall, I'm okay with it, and iPad OS 15 hasn't killed the battery life, at least not to the point where I'm noticing it too much. But that's pretty much it in terms of what I found with that's new with iPad OS 15. It's still very snappy. Like I said, about 95% of the way there. And for a first overall beta, it's a great beta. So if you guys do want to jump onto it, I still want to recommend you guys wait for beta 2 or beta 3 for it to stabilize a little bit because you guys saw mid video, it still crashed. And crashing is just part of the beta life. So if you guys want it on a main device, think twice before putting it on a main device. But let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. So if everybody saw the original video from my iPadOS 15 Beta 1 review, then you saw that iPadOS 15 brought a ton of new features. Yes, a lot of people were disappointed in the fact that we didn't get a real secondary monitor support or some real multitasking or something newer with files, but overall we did get a bunch of improvements and people got to remember that Apple didn't promise us anything. They just, all they did was put the M1 chip into the iPad Pro and then sold it to us. They didn't say, hey, because it's getting the M1 chip, now it's going to do this, this, and this. They literally put it in there and then we had to wait and see. So Apple didn't promise anything, so instead of being upset about it, just be grateful for the things that Apple did bring and things are just gonna get better over time. So just appreciate those new features because there are a bunch of new ones that we could all take advantage of. But overall, like you saw in the beta one, it works pretty well, right? From a performance standpoint, there aren't too many bugs, although there are some which I did highlight. And then overall, I would say it's about 90 to 95% of the way there, which is awesome for a beta one. So I know that by the time we get to beta 2, beta 3, beta 4, it'll get a lot better and then a lot more stable as well. And then, then I'd be able to recommend it. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and say not to actually install it, at least not on your main device. If you have a backup device, by all means, jump on it, play with it, see what's new. But if you have a main device, especially if it's your iPad or your Mac, hold off on the betas for at least one or two more beta rounds and then maybe jump into it. But that's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. You guys have been killing it on the, on the views lately, especially 
that Microsoft review and then also the beta one review. You guys have been amazing, but don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned because we got a bunch of new products in the studio to test out. And then we're also going to be touching on a couple more Microsoft products. And then finally, all the Google Suite products on the iPad Pro on both the app side and the web portal side. So if you guys made it to the end, comment down below that you made it to the end, that you guys are legends. And until next time, peace.